Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this little mat very simply and very quickly, just two pieces of fabric and a thin piece of batting. But I, the way I did the quilting was using this stitch guide that came with my machine. Now I think these come with most machines but I've never used mine at all. Never, I had one on my previous machine and never used it and I've got one on this machine and this is the first time I've used it but this makes sewing these lines so easy. So that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. Hi, so in today's video I'm going to try and make a mat to sit under my sewing machine. Just a really simple, um, nothing fancy mat. Now I've got two pieces of fabric. I've measured the base and I've measured the width and I've added about an inch to either measurement. So I've got two pieces of fabric. These are 20 inches by 11, both pieces. And then I've got a piece of thin wadding that's 19 by 10, so an inch smaller on both sides. And then I'm going to just do some simple straight line quilting and I thought I'd use this guide which I've got with my sewing machine and never used it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, I want my sewing lines to be about an inch and a half apart. So I've got my little sewing ruler here, there's a link to this on my website on the sewing page if you haven't got one and I've set it to an inch and a half and I'm basically just going to measure from the needle to that inch and a half mark with this. Now this slides into the back of your foot. There's a kind of a hole on the back and it slides in. So I'm going to push it in and push this along until it meets that mark on my ruler which is one and a half and that's it. So when I come to sew this now, I should be able to sew a line and then use that guide to put against the sewing line and it should enable me to sew at one and a half inch widths. So I'm just going to baste the fabric and the wadding together and I'm using Crafters Companion Stick and Spray for Fabric. Again, this is on my website. So if you go to the sewing page, or this actually might be on the adhesives page, but if you go to my website and click on shop and then you can use any of the drop down arrows. So I'm going to spray the back of the wadding just lightly. And then I'm going to fold that over onto the fabric and just smooth it down. It will just help to hold it in place while I'm sewing. And then I'm going to do the same with the fabric. Then I'm going to do the same on this half. So that's it. So this fabric on the top is a, it's quite thin. Um, so I might have to just, you know, trim it all up when I've sewn it. So for now, I think what I'm going to do is sew from corner to corner. So just to start me off, I've drawn a diagonal line from corner to corner with one of those air erasable pens. I've got my machine set up for a basic straight stitch and I'm just going to follow that line with my sewing machine for now.
Okay, so that's my first line sewn. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to line that row of stitching I've just done up with this arm that I've just put on my machine and put my presser foot down. And now that arm will follow that row of stitching which should enable me to sew <coughs> at an inch and a half apart. So I don't know if you can see, but I've put the arm down and that's going to follow the row of stitching. So I don't need to watch the needle or anything. I just need to make sure that this arm follows this line of stitching I've already done. So I don't know if you can see that now, two rows of stitching. So again, I'm just going to come on over, put my presser foot down, make sure that this bar is lined up with this row of stitching I've just done and carry on. And I'm going to do that all the way across. And when I've done that, I'm then going to go from the other corner and go across that way. Okay, so that's half of it done. <clears throat> and now I want to sew the lines on the other half. So I'm going to turn the fabric around now and I'm going to sew this half. This is so much easier using this guide than having to draw your lines on. Okay, so that's one done all in one direction. So now I'm going to turn it around, I'm going to draw a line from this corner down to this corner using my air erasable pen and then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. So much easier using this guide. I've never used it before, don't know why I've not. It's a lot easier than drawing your lines on. So I'm putting the fabric under the presser foot with the last row of stitching under the bar and then just making sure that I'm starting just on the fabric and then all I have to do is follow that row of stitching. Okay, so there it is, all quilted now, all finished. And as I said, um, this fabric is a bit movable, this top one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to trim it to so it's square to, to make, meet the pale blue on the back because that is a more stable fabric. So I'm just going to clean it up slightly and then it's ready for binding. So I've got my quilter's ruler here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to line up one of these black lines with the bottom of this pale blue fabric because I know that this pale blue fabric is completely straight because I, I cut it that way. So I'm just going to find the edge of it here, line this up on the black line so I know it's straight and then trim it. Then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side because this is a bit shorter here. Because it has moved while I was sewing it. But it's only a table mat and I did allow for a, a little bit of room, so that's fine. So I think that will be fine for now. So what I'm going to do now is get my binding. I'm going to start somewhere in the middle. I'm just going to open it up and fold it over just about between a quarter and a half an inch and then fold it back up on the fold lines and just crease it and put it in place like that so it's got a folded edge then I'm going to open this edge and I'm going to line it up with this pale blue fabric right on the edge and I'm going to clip it in place
and then I'm going to sew just fold that back in I'm going to sew along this fold line here all the way around I can remove this guide now I don't need it I'm going to put that back in with all my accessories and I'm going to start about an inch down from the edge of the bias tape And as I say, I'm just following the fold line on the bias tape and lining the edge of the bias tape up with my pale blue fabric. When I get near the end, I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch from the end. Now, I showed you how to do this in my patchwork scan and cut mat. So I'll leave a link to that video show you, so you can see how I do it. So I'm just going to go slow and stop a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm going to leave the needle down when I get to a quarter and just do a couple of back stitches and then take it out. And then what I'm going to do now is hold my finger on the corner, fold this up so it's vertical, right on the corner of the fabric, like so, and then bring it back down. so that it all lines up and then you start sewing again on that fold line. Okay, so I'm getting back towards near the end now. So this is the bit where I started, where I had folded the bias tape in. And this is where I'm nearly coming to an end. So I'm going to cut it about an inch past. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to sew straight down. So now I'm just going to tuck that in so it all lines up together and then I'm going to fold this over and bring it to the front and sew it down. Well, I'm just going to show you the corners so when we get to the corners because we did that stopping and folding up these corners should mitre now perfectly. So I'm just going to fold that over, put a clip there and then fold this over and you should get lovely mitered corners. I'm just going to move the clip now right onto the corner and then I'm just going to work my way 
around doing the same on all four sides. So I've got a combination of clips and pins in it so now I'm just going to sew as close to the edge as I can all the way around this binding to hold it into place. As I say just like I did in the scan and cut table mat I made a couple of months ago and then I'll give it a quick press and I'll show you how it's looking. So again, when you get near the corner, just keep your fingers on the bias tape that's going this way and stop when you get to just near the edge of that tape. Leave your needle down, lift your presser foot and turn and put your foot back down and that will hold your tape in place, ready to set off coming down the straight side again. Okay, there it is finished and I can turn it over and I can use that side if I want to. And because I use that sewing guide, all my lines are nice and evenly spaced so it looks good on both sides. Well, this is the side I want up. I'm gonna make one to put under my serger as well. I'll take a picture of it in place. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. You can now support me on Patreon and there will be a link directly under this video if you would like to do that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.